Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's a Philip electronic multimeter. It's called PM2503. It's actually quite good condition. When we think about this is 50 years old. <laughs> It doesn't really look like that. It, the design is quite modern. So it's about from 1970. And it, hear this? The click goes really, really good. And there is an off button. So that means this thing runs off batteries. I just tried to put it in DC, put it in voltage and try and put in some bolts. This is the, the, that is a, a little bit funny with this this design. Banana connectors there here hidden on the left side. Hmm yeah. Left side. So you gotta use your left hand if you're a, most people are right handed and they they would probably want the wires to come into whatever they're working with from the right side. So now cables need to go all the way around and whatnot. And then, okay, you see? So this is how it's supposed to be if you don't want it dangling around in your stuff. Well, well, there is a funny thing about this. I guess there's another little meter in here that says AC and then plus minus. So I guess this will automatically show me if the uh, input DC volts is like plus or negative or whatever it says there's a bad test function here and then it should go all the way up here on the display so far so good and the back side i think maybe the serial number 69 maybe that is from 1969 or is it 74 that is from 1974 i don't know exactly when I search on the internet, this one should be about 1970. But this red one, the red sticker is a service sticker. So this one was sent in for service. And the warranty for the service is uh, valid until 1977. So it was repaired in 1976. So, and of course, it wasn't repaired the first few years, right? So I guess this is how we access the battery compartment calibrate we got some fuses but it says two nine volt batteries Ugh. i don't even think i got that many so we need to this you can't do with your finger no you need a screwdriver okay Oh, this is really what I hate to see, people. Don't leave batteries in stuff you're storing. This one did not puke. It is a little bit sticky. Maybe the other one. Ooh, how do we get this up? I think we're quite lucky not to see the batteries. Uh huh. We got we got the two fuses. We don't have any spare fuses. I guess this will be this spare fuse. There was some sticky tape. Here we go. This one was supposed to hold the fuses. So, we've got room for some spare fuses. Well, well, I'll try and see if I can find some new 9 volt batteries and then we'll see if we can get this back into life. I was lucky to find a few 9 volt batteries with actually 9 volts on them. Whoa! Now this one is turned on. Let's see if we hit the battery test. So that works. We are in DC. Let's 
You see that? This is 20 volts. See? 20 volts. So. So that was 20. 30. And also go down to 20 again and then 10. So I think, yeah, 10. Let's take the next. And 10. And there's a. Fine. So this is one more step. 10, 9. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And then 8. And let's try and go up again from 8 to 9. <laughs> See how the. Ooh. <laughs> of course, this is how it is. Let's see if we can go in down to millivolts. So this is one volt, three, raise three. So it's again also accurate. See, this is one. Why is it hammering out here? This is a little bit weird, right? Ooh, three. See? Ooh. Okay, so the switch here is okay. So that is the problem. We need to operate the switch a little bit. Then we can go to... Aha! See? Now it works. So that was one. And then we dial... Going to five. Let's go to 300 millivolts. And then 300 millivolts is there. And then let's go down to 100. And then we go to the last range. That one also works. And then we go to 10 millivolt less. It reads a little bit too much. Now I'll try and turn it off. So that should be zero. Ooh, what is that? There's nonce. It's not zero. Aha. So it's my power supply that is not going zero. Really? 10 millivolts. What kind of a shitty power supply is that I'm having? Doing, uh, I think it has something to do with this. Okay, let's, let's go back again. Now my power supply is turned off. And this one goes to 10 millivolts. I think this has something to do with the input impedance of this thing. It is just amazingly crazy high. Let's try and see what happens if I take this meter and stick this in here. Yep. 12 millivolts. <laughs> and see this detail here? This meter, I don't know if we can see this. It goes to minus right so it actually reveals the output went below zero and then back to minus 10 millivolts so let me turn on the power supply so that was 70 millivolts 60 okay now it actually goes to plus 10 so so that is one of the features of this super sexy philips meter here it shows you positive or negative. So this is po oh, this is positive 10 millivolts. And now I turn it off and then see, mi minus 10 millivolts. Really, really cute. I really like this uh, feature. I think we should try and open this and see what is inside. Definitely a good idea. Also, I wanted to know. Let's go in three volts. Let me measure. If I go in in ohm, haha, ten mega ohm, right? And. Muck. So 
Hotel Mega Ohm. That is how it is. Off, we better save the batteries. And that was quite easy. Only two screws. See, there's a, a springy contact. Of course, there is a shield on the inside. We should probably tape or glue this so it's not gonna go in and short circuit stuff. So, that is a great. A little mod, we see quite a few transistors. There's a little diode. We got a, what is that, a dual gate fed transistor thingy. And then there's OQO51N1. I have been looking a little bit on the internet, and I think that it will be some op amps. Oh. So all the red, blue, yellow, black wire here. That is for this little meter. It's up here. And this is of course a reveal that somebody was in here. They didn't pay too much attention to details. This is not good. This should have been done correctly. And this also shows here the two batteries that are in series, so it's a plus minus supply. I would have preferred this to be marked clearly here on the PCB. So when these wires fall off, you know what is what here. So this is the zero and this is positive and this is negative supply. But now you will know if you look it up in this video. What I also would like to know is what are the different trimmers doing? So if you want to calibrate this, oh look there's a shielded wire. Isn't that just beautifully made? So it goes from down here. Uh, there is actually a thing that I find a little bit beautiful. See that will be the AC or the DC volts and this will be the ohm setting right so that means okay if we're in ohm see there's another switch those two pieces of metal up here they're connected with this one so that means if you're either see this is AC DC right so look what happens AC it is not connected in that side, right? AC, DC. <laughs> so I really like this funny way of doing that. So when none of them is active, that means you're either in off or you're in ohms. <laughs> I think that is pretty cool. Oh yeah, and if I look carefully in this little gap here, I can see some resistors and some capacitors. And that's of course, to, uh, they want those capacitors to be in parallel with the resistors. So they will kind of speed this up. So they will uh, give you higher bandwidth. Especially for AC walls. I will also have a trimmer capacitor here again to make it good in AC walls. That one, I don't know what that is. But aren't we going to have a little look? I see a little piece of metal. Can we just... I really would like to have a look in here. So this is a rubber thingy and a transistor with another component as well what is that doing that is a little bit funny isn't it so 
that was a five to eight something, right? Yeah, that is all. Nice. Okay, we got two decks, and the, that was the zero setting. I mean, this is really, really beautiful instrument. And this is from 1970, so it is a very good uh, plastic construction and good capacitors as well. Yeah, I, I really like it. Of course, when you see stuff, stuff like this, just put a little drop of 10 seconds glue. Okay. All the way. That's how we do it. And then it sticks immediately. So that is better. We don't want this to get loose and cause all sorts of bad problems. Let's fix stuff immediately when we see it. See, it's falling loose. <laughs> I just saw another really funny detail. So this is the amp input and it comes up in this wire. It can only do one amp this instrument anyway so so those thin wires that will probably be fine. Then it goes all the way up to this fuse and then back to that point. And look here's a really really fun detail. This is actually a constantan resistor wire that goes to the one amp selection. So this is their trimmer. This is the point where they measure current. And this wire is soldered to this wire, the orange one, exactly where you get the correct readout. Isn't that just cute? So this is how you trim the one amp range. <laughs> 